Hey, what's up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Today I want to just go over my league starter for Necropolis, which is the Archmage Ball Lightning Hierophant. It's uh, been a real blast running through most of the content here without having to rely much on the gear, uh, as the new updated Archmage got super buffed. Uh, what it does is giving us uh, added flat lightning damage equal to a percent of our unreserved maximum mana. And uh, this adds up a lot of flat lightning damage as you can get quite a bit uh, even for a low budget build as the one I'm using right here. And the great thing is that you don't even have to play a ball of lightning if you want another playstyle. Arc is another skill that works great, Firestorm is another one and the list just goes on. Basically any spell works for this. Uh, however, you cannot use brands, orbs, val, or skills used by totems, traps, or mines, so do keep that in mind. I figured I'd make a low budget version before I start to invest uh, a lot more currency into the build, uh, as there are quite a bit of improvements to make here, uh, so hopefully this uh, quick guide can help you out to get started at least. Basically, most of my gear is uh, self-found or crafted, very easy to set up and start blasting. Uh, the things we did buy were the two uniques that we are using for this build, which is uh, one Chaos each here, and also my six link here for another 10 Chaos, and one of the skills that we are using, and it's a transfigured gem. Don't worry, it's not needed for the build at all, uh, but I feel it's a nice addition to have. So, Ball of Lightning, why is this so good to use? Well, so how it works is that we shoot out a ball that will deal damage around it every 150 milliseconds. And by being the Herophant, we also get access to a lot of increased area, making it deal damage in a greater area. And uh, we also have quite a bit of cost speed here, and we're also using a slower projectile support, making the balls go slower, making it so more balls will deal damage to the same target, making sort of a shotgun effect here. And uh, this is uh, where Archmage is also really strong, as we get so much flat lightning damage from this uh, while stacking mana. By picking up Divine Guidance from the Hierophant Ascendancy, make it so increase and reductions to maximum mana also apply to damage at 30% of their value. So all the increased mana that we have here, and we get around 400%, this would then be transferred 30% of its value, so we get a lot of increased damage from taking uh, increased to mana. And we also spec into elemental overload here, which makes us deal 40% more elemental damage with the skill uh, the Delta crit recently, but crits will not deal extra damage. This is propped all of the time basically, as the ball hits so many times. Arcane Cloak is another skill that works as a buff to us and it will uh, consume a portion of our mana and making us absorb incoming damage, but also providing us even more flat lightning damage. And this is linked with automation support, increased duration and also Arcane Surge. Arcane Surge is uh, very important here to have. Uh, because without it we are only going to get around half of the effect like a mana region and cost speed. Uh, as for other sources that we can get Arcan Surge from, like the Arcan Blessing from our Ascendancy or the Arcan Capsator in the passive tree. Seal of Power is another skill we are using for bosses or rares uh, to provide some extra flat lightning damage when we are standing in Sigil. And speaking of automations, we're also using Enduring Cry with Calm to Arms for some extra endurance charges and life regen. To boost the single target, we're also using a Arcanist brand linked with Wave of Conviction for the exposure and also with Conductivity and Elemental Weakness to lower the lightning and elemental resist on the enemies. And by using Dodred Damning, this will make us able to have a one additional curse and it's uh, very strong to have early on when starting out. And this also provides us all resist here and with some other perks as well. And for Auras we are basically only going to be using one as we can't reserve any of our mana. And this we achieve by using the Eternal Blessing support which makes the skill have no reservation and at the same time won't allow us to have any more auras that will reserve mana. And here are a couple of different uh, choices you can go for. Uh, I'm going for Determination here, just to get some extra defense here from all the armor. Uh, really nice to have as we are specced into Unwavering Stance also here, making us immune to stuns, but also makes us not able to uh, avoid enemy attacks. 
Wrath is another aura that you can choose to choose. And it's going to boost uh, your damage quite a bit, but you will also feel a lot more squishier. We are also using Clarity here uh, for the Mana region, but linked with a Arrogant support, which makes us reserve uh, life here instead of mana uh, for this aura. And last skill is going to be our mobility skill, which is Frostblink of Wintry Blast. And uh, this is a transfigured gem, and it's not required to have this for this build. But I kind of like the playstyle with it, so this basically removes the cooldown of the travel skill, making us able to use this without the cooldown. Uh, as we already have so much cost speed invested into the build, this is a great fit for us. And uh, you can also link this with faster casting support as well for even more cost speed. It do however take a while to get uh, used to, I feel. Uh, if you don't like it, no worries, a normal one works here as well. We just go with Flame Dash instead. Mana, as mentioned earlier, is also worked as a source of defense. We are specking into Mind Over Matter for 40% of damage taken from mana before life. And uh, this can be improved even more by using different uniques. But for this video, we are happy with this node alone. Mind Spiral is a second unique for the build, uh, really common to drop and also really cheap. From this we're getting flat mana which is great and we also get a percent of maximum mana as extra energy shield and this bumps up the total energy shield by quite a bit. And with the Light Eater passive for the spell damage leech as energy shield, with the Mastery here also for 10% leech is instant to help us keep our shield up. We also get some damage taken recoup as mana here as well, and also makes us unable to leech mana, so do keep that in mind. And if we take a look on the rest of the gear here, you can see that we want to get some spell suppression here to get us to cap. We're also using a shield to help out with this, as most of the tiers on our gear is uh, T3 or 2. And you can also go for another wand here if you want to go for more damage. I feel like the damage is more than enough though. We also get chance to avoid elemental ailments from our shield here as well. And same for the boots here from the Eater of World Implicit. And uh, for a total of 50% and this can be achieved to 100. But it is not going to be in this low budget version. On the gloves you can also get lightning exposure on hit as the eater of world implicit. Uh, you can also get lightning damage leash as life here as well. As we already get uh, the exposure here from uh, the wave of conviction skill. Uh, for the weapon though try to go for as much cost speed as you can. Mana, mana region and also spell damage. The amulet is uh, a really nice item to use to get some extra attributes. Try to focus on all attributes or dexterity, which is going to be the main attribute that will be a struggle to get for this build. And we also went with the instinct passive as our anoint here to get the suppress capped. A uh, very cheap anoint. It's uh, two safeys and one azurite oil. And you can also choose to path this way in the passive tree. Uh, it's uh, only going to be 6 points here. Can be really nice to know if you are struggling on getting yourself to suppress capped. And here you get 10 more from the small points here. Fry from each. And then making us able to anoint another suppress nodes like quick step here. Or entrench is uh, also a other cheap option. And other than that, it's uh, very straightforward here for the gear. Uh, going for Chaos Resist, Mana, Mana Region, Life and just Normal Resist uh, to get yourself capped basically. And let's take a look on our Floss here. Starting with a normal Divine Flask with Bleed Removal. We're also using a Sapphire, a Ruby and also a Topaz Flask here. And these will improve the Max Resist and also increase Resist for each respective element. And really strong to have even though we don't have 100% uptime for this. Uh, but while mapping we are basically having them up uh, all the time. And lastly we're also using a Granite Flask here for some additional armor. All of these flaws has been set up to be automated. Used when charges reach full. It's just a quality of life to have in my opinion. Uh, they also have gain uh, charges when you are hit by an enemy, which is going to work really really great uh, with the uh, unwavering stance, as we can't avoid enemy attacks. Other than that, for the suffixes here, we went for spell damage leash as energy shield. Also we get with reduce effect of shock, reduce effect of curses, 
and also some increased cost speed. And also increased armor would be also a great choice to use here. For the Pantheons we went with uh, Soul of the Brian King here and this is for the freeze immunity and also the shield effect. And then we also went with Soul of Sherkai for the poison and also some less chaos damage over time taken. So there was the things that I want to cover up in this uh, low budget video. I'll uh, put the link to the POB in the description so you can check it out more for yourself. Uh, if you have any questions feel free to drop a comment, I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And some improvements for the builds just comes in mind is going to be to use a oscillating scepter here for the elemental overload. And this is going to save up some points for the build as we can path a little bit different. Uh, currently these are around 1 divine for the base. A Watcher's Eye with the damage taken from mana before life while affected by clarity. These are around 2 divines. A Ancestor Vision makes uh, modifiers to chance to suppress spell damage also apply to chance to avoid elemental ailments at 50% of their value. And this uh, combined with the shield and boots here is going to make us uh, ailment immune. This however is around 7 divines. And these are just some of the improvements that comes in mind. I also want to try out the Ice Nova Oz Frostbolt here, which works really great with Archmage as well. Uh, this game, however, is like a one and a half divine at the moment, but it's something that I will look into. So plenty of stuff to do here, but I'll make another video for that, and I hope this makes you want to try out the build at least. And if you wonder how I level up, I can go over it just real quick here. Uh, starting at level 1, you just go and you buy yourself a explosive trap. And this you want to add as much uh, flat damage as possible. And at level 12, you get access to Stormbrand. And here you also want to spec into the Rune Binder key. Uh, so you can have two brands on one target. And uh, same here, just uh, go for as much flat damage, you have to add a lightning, add a cold that you can add. And now you have those two brands and also explosive trap for some extra single target. And at level 28 you will get access to ball lightning and you can save it uh, until you get archmage at level 31. And then you should just uh, been uh, taking most of the nodes on top of the skill tree. And uh, then you can just uh, change out explosive trap for ball of lightning basically. And uh, just have the brands for some extra single target on bosses. And that's basically how I did it and it was just uh, very easy to level up and go through the campaign uh, with it even on League launch. So what do you think about the Archmage Ball Lightning Herophant? Have you tried it before or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!